Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Twit specials is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Twit Live special, episode 191, recorded Saturday, March 8th, 2014. South by Southwest Interactive, day two. Hi, I'm Tanya Hall, and we're, you're watching Twit Networks, and we're going to talk today about day two of South by Southwest. We're going to focus on interactive. It's an event that's actually a culture festival that happens in Austin, Texas. If you've never attended, it's been in existence since 1987 and grows every year. We're going to be joined by a guest who is actually on the staff for South by Southwest in Austin, and that's Hugh Forrest. He is the interactive director for South by Southwest. Welcome, Hugh, to the show. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So how long have you been with South by? Uh, I started working here in 1989 and have uh, been with the interactive event since 1994, although at that point we were called South by Southwest Multimedia, and the name gradually transitioned to interactive. Tons of people pour into Austin, Texas for this time, for this event. 35,000, I think, was the number last year. Um, what, what are you expecting this year? Uh, you, you're exaggerating a little. little. It's, it was 30,000 last year, and was I think it will be roughly the same this year. Um, but as always, our, our concern is more on quality over quantity. We love that the event has been fortunate enough to grow a lot over the last few years. But um, again, the, the main goal is, is quality. Now, I should say, you're actually at the event right now. Things are happening. It's day two. Um, what was the big news from yesterday? Yesterday was, you know, people were arriving. Um, you know, certainly there are things that have already launched. What was the biggest news from day one of the event? <laughs> uh, news from day one, uh, it was the first Friday in three years where it hadn't rained, so that was good news. Um, <laughs> otherwise, I think one of the most uh, crowded sessions was the panel we did with um, uh, Eric Schmidt and Jared Cohn from Google as moderated by Stephen Levy. Um, they were talking about the paperback release of their book that came out last spring, which is, I think, called The New Digital Age. Um, and that was uh, an extremely full session. Um, I was not able to attend, but I heard the conversation was very lively. And um, it's the first time we've had someone that high up in Google speaking at the event. So it was uh, a, great, uh, a great thing to have them involved. How important is interactive in the whole festival, which is, uh, you know, got a lot of things happening. You've got the interactive piece, which has marketing and software and tech, and then you've got film and music. How important is interactive in your event? Well, interactive has grown, has been fortunate enough to grow a lot over the last few years. And again, that's nice. But I think one of the things that makes South by Southwest so unique is not only do you have these technology people here, but you have these indie filmmakers and you have all these bands coming in. So it's this real convergence of creative industries, which is, I think, relatively unique. I mean, there are lots and lots of great events out there that you can get lots of information at, but I don't know that anyone quite brings together the mix of people that we do and, and put that in a very creative city at a time of the year when the weather's generally really nice and warmer than elsewhere in the U.S., and it makes for a, a really great atmosphere. But you, it's raining today. I mean... <laughs> Are there are there branded umbrellas somewhere? Did some marketing guru it's take advantage? Christine, come on, let's be <laughs> accurate here. You know, there's a lot of conversation around the networking piece of the event, but there's a lot of content. How many actual sessions, um, speakers, and panels do you have? We have somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 800 total sessions. Um, so we uh, like to think that South by Southwest Interactive is kind of like a living, breathing manifestation of the internet. Um, you uh, have uh, 25 different sessions you can choose from at any given time, plus a number of networking events. So uh, it's sensory overload, and we like to think that's a feature, not a flaw. There's just so many great things happening, so many things you can do to, to stimulate your mind and your imagination. And again, it all boils down to creativity and innovation and inspiration. 
Chelsea Clinton is, is one of the speakers. You've got Neil deGrasse Tyson, who is launching um, his show, Cosmos. Um, you've got uh, Bill Nye, the science. You've got a lot of really cool people there. Chelsea Clinton, from a political standpoint, I'm sure has the government stamp of approval to be there. But I have to say, Edward Snowden, um, is kind of, it's kind of exciting, but it's a little controversial. What, what brought this on? Uh Sure, we're very excited that Snowden's involved. He'll be speaking on Monday, and for people who are not at South by Southwest, there's a free live cast. You can uh, tune on that. Um, you know, what Snowden's going to talk about is really the importance um, of, of considering and building uh, new technologies for privacy as we move forward. And, uh, you know, I think that's a really important uh, issue for this audience to consider and debate and talk about. Uh, the internet economy is is has been a huge driver of the U.S. economy in the last 10 years, and particularly social media has been this huge driver of the U.S. economy. And uh, the health of these social media systems depends on people understanding what kind of privacy they can expect from uh, from these systems. And 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 again, Snowden's talk is really less about you know should I be behind bars or what's my life like in Russia every day, and more a call to action. To these innovators and hackers and makers and entrepreneurs and founders and uh, startup uh, people who are attending the event to build new systems that ensure better privacy. You know, I, I know you've got a lot happening. It's day two. It's exciting. I'm excited just following uh, the event. And I guess my, my biggest question is, too, how has it changed this year from not just last year, but, you know, since you launched the event? Well, you know, we, we've been lucky enough to grow a, uh, grow a lot. And, um, <laughs> you know, I remember the first year we did this, we had something like eight panels. And, and again, grown uh, several levels of complexity since then. Um, it is a, an event that takes a full year to plan. Uh, and even at that, there, there are always things that don't quite go exactly as we planned them. But uh, the, the biggest thing that really hasn't changed is, um, in the 20 years that we've been doing it is this focus on creativity. I mean, we try to bring together very, very creative people um, from, again, a variety of industries and uh, bring them together and lots of good things typically come out of that. I really appreciate you taking the time to join with us and talk about what's happening. And I'm excited to see the rest of the event unfold, including Edward Snowden. And uh, if somebody wants to follow along with the event online, they couldn't uh, be in Austin, Texas this year. How can they do that here? Probably the best resource is just the South by Southwest website, which is sxsw.com. We're posting uh, hourly updates there. And again, that'll have full information on the Snowden livecast as well as the keynote livecast. As you mentioned before, we've got uh, Dr. Tyson doing a keynote today. That's at 2 p.m. And that it will be livecast also for free. So you can watch that from the comfort of your home computer, even if you don't happen to be in Austin. Well, thank you again for joining us. Have a lot of fun and uh, grab one of those Oreo cookies I keep hearing about. <laughs> oh, we'll try. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So, um, you know, one of the, the people we have on is going to talk about a new app that's launched. Um, it's Alyssa Shavinsky. She is the co-founder of Glimpse and speaks on a lot of different things, including she's speaking at South by Southwest. Welcome and thanks for joining us this morning or afternoon for you, I guess. Right. Noon. Uh, noon still feels like morning to me. I keep programmer hours. Well, and I'm sure it's South by Southwest. Lots of parties happening. So people are getting up a little later. Um Congratulations on your launch of Glimpse. Nice write-up in TechCrunch, by the way. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and we love that write-up. We think it tells our story really well. Why is Glimpse any different? So you've got um, the whole photo sharing space is obviously a big deal. I get asked daily by media outlets to go to Instagram and comment on something, um, which is great. And I think it certainly generates a lot of popularity. Instagram sold for 1 billion. You've got Snapchat, um, which is valued. I think I, I heard you say um, even just recently um, at 2.5 billion, but you know, now you've got another app. What makes it different than anything else? Why is this important? Well, I love most of those apps, but Glimpse is very different. Sometimes there's stuff that you want to share and you just don't necessarily want to post it on Facebook or on Twitter. And Glimpse is great for that. And Glimpse truly disappears. Pax and I founded Glimpse last year at South by Southwest. 
And we were really enjoying using Snapchat, but we, we wanted to feel more safe and more secure. So there were a few things that we wanted to address. The first is screenshots. If I send someone an image and they can take a screenshot, then it's not really all that private. Glimpse uses this filter technology. It's like a watermark that is on top of your image. And the human eye can still see the image underneath, but if you take a screenshot, it's scrambled and blurred. So you can send just about anything and it's ephemeral, it disappears, it disappears from your inbox, it disappears from our servers, and using the screenshot protection, it can be shared. So it's really the best way to send something that's private. Seems like there is a big theme of security and privacy, again, with photos. And I can certainly see why that's important. And, you know, everybody wants to share our, our information. I'm kind of intrigued, too. You're, you're speaking at South By. So not only did you have this, you know, and congratulations again on your launch. I hope it's a huge success. But you're also speaking. Um, and I, I don't even think I want to say the name uh, <laughs> of your panel. What, what's the yeah. name of your uh, what's the name of your talk? <laughs> well, we can skip the name and I'll tell you what it's about. Uh, last summer, uh, I put together this hack, uh, and I hacked OkCupid. I, I've talked to most of the C-suite at OKC about it, and, and they kind of like what I've been doing. Uh, and I built this filter, and it was basically like a douchebag filter for OkCupid. Uh, so women on OkCupid get too many messages, and then they quit using the service. Uh, so I wanted to find a better way for women to find their matches on OkCupid. Uh, and I built a filter that screened for uh, grammar. So we had a grammar check uh, and it screened for message length. And it also screened to make sure that the messages were coming from someone who could be interesting to you, which meant filtering around geography uh, and various forms of attractiveness. Uh, so my talk is going to be on uh, the things that I learned building this filter and the conversations I've had with women about their interactions on sites like OkCupid and how we can have a better experience dating. The landscape of dating has changed a lot. You have apps like Coffee Meets Bagel and Tinder, and women opt in to decide who can message them. So that's a really big improvement, but sites like Match and OkCupid are still very dominant. And if you care about online dating, it's important to figure out how to make those sites work better for you. And it is a really crazy space. And um, there's all kinds of hookup apps. And, you know, I'm sorry, you know, mom who was listening. Uh, but, you know, there is. There's a lot of stuff out there. Um, I'm really intrigued by the privacy issue. And I'm going to mm -hmm. be following along. And if somebody wants to attend your talk or connect with you, what's the best way they can do that, Alyssa? Uh, they can write me, Alyssa, at weneedglimpse.com. They can find me on Twitter. My handle is Alyssa Beth. That's probably the best way to connect. And uh, my talk is listed. I'll be posting it on Twitter as well. I'd love to see people there. It's Monday at 930. So it's early, but I'll be bringing some, you know, coffee and breakfast and stuff. Oh, <laughs> that's intriguing. <laughs> they should come to our party, though. We're having a party Sunday from 2 to 5 at Valhalla to celebrate the Glimpse launch. Are you going to have any of those Oreos? I think I'm going to ask everybody. I'm really curious about <laughs> this Oreo. No. no, no Oreos, but we do have the nation's leading TSA hacker being our DJ. So like one of the country's most interesting civil rights activists is also a DJ in New York City at night. And he's going to come and spin at our party. And of course, we'll be talking about privacy in Snowden and uh, how we proved you can get guns through the TSA. Wow. Um, I read, you know, I'm really regretting not being at South by this year. It's a lot of great conversation, especially in the hacker space. Thanks so much again, Alyssa Shavinsky for joining us and, um, enjoy South by Southwest. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Very excited actually. And, and it's a very expensive space. I mean, it's a lot of questions about, you know, how much money can be made in the photo sharing. There's, uh, you know, people are saying it's a $10 billion market. We'll see. Um, I don't know. It's uh, it's interesting. So next up, we have Todd Wasserman. Todd Wasserman is the business editor at Mashable. And um, Todd has been on this. Uh, we've talked many times in the past. Todd's certainly not his first time at South by Southwest. Welcome, Todd, uh, to the show this morning. Hi, thanks for having me. Absolutely. So, um, 
lots happening. I already asked you off before we started if you'd had the, the cookie, and you're on the lookout for the Oreo cookie, right? I intend to make some time to, to go down there and check it out. Um, I There might be a huge line, although the rain today will keep people away, I would think. So how many years have you attended South by Southwest? <clears throat> this is my third year in, uh, in in four years. I skipped one year a while back. How have you seen it change in just the short term? I don't know if you heard me ask you how it's changed since 1987, but I've seen it changed in, in the last few years, not necessarily in a, in a derogatory way, but it seems to change every year. How have you seen it change? Uh, I think it's a very subtle change in just people's attitudes. I think the first year I came here, which I guess was, I don't know, three or four years ago, um, there seemed to be more of an expectation that there was going to be something big, some, you know, because Twitter came out of here. Um, that there was going to be something like that. Everyone's on the lookout. They didn't want to miss out. And I think um, it feels like now people have accepted that there's not going to be that, but there's going to be a lot of interesting conversation, a lot of interesting companies. Um, but that big news event, it is not necessarily going to happen. Why is it still relevant? I mean, is it relevant because of those interesting companies and interesting conversation? I mean, Foursquare didn't attend this year. They were launched at South by Southwest. But I can certainly understand with their recent relationship with Microsoft. They're working on a lot of things. Um, but what do you think? Why is it still relevant? I think it's relevant because they get so many big people um, to come here and participate, you know, like Edward Snowden. Um, you know, although you can... You can check that out online. The fact is that it happened around South by Southwest. You know, you had Eric Schmidt. Um, and, you know, in certain industries like advertising, it's really um, it's where people go to kind of see what everyone else is doing. So um, although there's not necessarily a huge news event, there is a lot of a lot of conversation um, and people want to see who's who's kind of, you know, thinking ahead the most. What are you um, watching for? What what is on your radar this year? Uh, th there's a lot of talk around um, what you might call the Internet of Everything, which is the Internet of Things is the smart appliances like your refrigerator and the, there's the Nest thermostat. But the Internet of Everything is that stuff plus your Fitbit or your personal, you know, uh, wearable computing device plus the dashboard of your car. It's sort of this whole digital lifestyle that people, it seems like it's out of the Jetsons, but it's all technology that's actually out there right now. It just hasn't been integrated yet. You know, I um, I think it's a really powerful place for especially business to connect in a marketing way. It's certainly there's networking opportunities, there's job opportunities. I was a little let down that Grumpy Cat didn't make it this year. What's up? No friskies? Grumpy Cat is here. It is here? Grumpy, yeah, he he's is? at the Mashable House. Um, oh, okay. And he, he was only available for three hours. They didn't want to, like, uh, stress him out or anything. But uh, Grumpy Cat was definitely here. And we have a wrecking ball there, too. I don't know if you saw the Miley Cyrus video. <laughs> I didn't, but apparently it's very popular with the kids. Have you actually sat on the wrecking ball, Todd? No, but Lance uh, Ulanoff, uh, who you know well, uh, did. And I, I did Instagram that photo if you want to check it out. So. Oh, well, maybe you have to put it up on Glimpse. Although nobody will see it, obviously, if you do that. Um, you know, Todd, I thought, what's that? Glimpse, I thought a one way to hack that is if someone sends you a photo, you can take a picture of your phone. You know, have, have they thought about that? Oh, but that's a good point. I don't know. I digress. We'll have to have her back on. I'd love to uh, talk more with you. I need, I, you, I just love following you and, and your, your work on business and um, your work at Mashable. So if somebody wants to follow you at South by or just follow you at Mashable, what's the best way they can do that, Todd? Uh, Twitter is really my, uh, my social media of choice. So it's just Todd Wasserman at Twitter. Todd Wasserman at Twitter. Thank you again and uh, have fun. Don't get too wet. And, um, tell, you know, send me a link to the, the video if you find the, the cookie. I will. Thanks. Take care. Absolutely. That was Todd Wasserman. Love him. And I love those guys at Mashable. They're always doing some fun stuff. I cannot believe they have a wrecking ball. Really? I shouldn't be surprised. Um, that was uh, definitely a, a controversial topic there. Speaking of controversial topics, we have Harper Reed joining us to talk about what he's doing at South by Southwest. Harper Reed is certainly a fan of, uh, we are a fan of Harper Reed. He's uh, been on Twit before. Uh, welcome, Harper, to the show. Hello. I am currently walking away from a vacuum. <laughs> so apparently, I, I thought I was really clever by going into the hallway and there's, 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 there's a vacuum. And then, and then Werner Vogels is chasing me. 
<laughs> this, this is, is what, this is exactly what happens at South by Southwest. This is what happens when you you Skype somebody in from a live festival, especially you. I mean, of all people, mm. right? Um, I I so, you know. So Werner Werner has to say hi. <laughs> hi. Somebody's photobombing your your interview. <laughs> What's happening there? This is Twit. Oh, uh, Twit. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, so this is South by Southwest, as you might imagine, and it's. Up, oh, your Skype is freezing up there, Harper. He he probably walked into a zone of no bandwidth. Awesome. So as we try to get Harper back, um, Harper's speaking on Don't Be Ned Stark, Change uh, Institution and Live. We're going to actually, um, until we get Harper back, we're going to go to our next guest, which is Aaron. Hello. St Hello, Harper. Hello. Sorry about that. Are you there? Okay, there he is. I'm, I'm there now. So anyway. Well, okay, so you're speaking at South by Southwest. Um, there's a lot happening at South by. I want to talk to you about first. So before we get to your session, um, Edward Snowden, really excited about this conversation and the controversy that it's stirring up. Um, why do you think it's important that South by had uh, just made a decision uh, to include Edward Snowden in the event? Well, I think that this is a very important topic that is affecting millions of people around the world, let alone people in the United States. And I think it's very important for uh, all of us to kind of have a dialogue about it. And what better way than from actual S Snowden himself to start that dialogue? Um, we haven't, I don't think, as the American people really heard from him. Um, we've heard from journalists who've spoken to him, and there's been some recorded video interviews. But this is a really unprecedented opportunity to kind of hear exactly what his um, motivations are, his insights are, all of this kind of important stuff that that I think um, I personally am very excited to hear about. And um, you know, on the on another topic, um, we just heard uh, Assange this morning. Um, talking about some very similar things, and that was that was also very interesting and, and another kind of unprecedented um, opportunity. Well, it, exactly. That was my next question for you: is just how much? I mean, I, I know they're they're simulcasting Edwards' um, conversation in a lot of different places to make sure that everybody can participate. Um, this is a big topic for me. I think you know. It's it's starting to get a little bit of traction in the news and media, but it doesn't seem like there are people. I I mean, I, I think it's huge, and I would love to yeah. be there, um, to be a part of that conversation. How how much are people actually talking about it though at the event? Is this really um, captivating people, or are they focused on parties mm. and Oreo cookies and wrecking balls and that sort of thing? You know, this is a really interesting. That's a good question. I don't actually know. Um, I would have to say that I'm probably hanging out with with a very interesting group of people. We are we are doing both. <laughs> While we are on the wrecking ball, we are talking about privacy. <laughs> privacy is a great conversation. I would love to talk more about that with you. But you're um, you're speaking, and um, mm -hmm. what is your panel or what is your uh, conversation about, and why is it important? So we're actually doing one that I'm I'm very excited about, and I kind of wish that I had an opportunity to see this panel, not for myself necessarily, but for my peers on the panel. It's called Don't Be a Ned Stark, kind of how to be a change agent inside of an institution or an organization. Um, and we, we're going to hear from some a bunch of really great people who have either been kind of the, the inspiration for the change or the change agent themselves um, and talk about how, what are their hints, what are their tricks to bring change to that institution. Um, because that's one of the hardest things I think in the world is when um, you come into a legacy organization and you have to kind of do something different or you have bring a little bit of a change, innovation, et cetera. And we all want to talk about innovation, um, but being an innovator is hard. And so hopefully hearing from some of these people, Laura Ramos, Brian Bannon, um, et cetera, will, will, will give us all a good idea of how to bring that change when it's needed. What is on your radar, you know, besides this kind of conversation around um, security, Edward Snowden and that sort of thing, and, and obviously what you're doing, is there anything else that has surprised you or caught your attention at South by Southwest? Well, um, the thing that I think is, is really important for us is how do we create these security tools so that our, my mom can use it? Um, and this is something that I keep thinking about, you know, and it kind of blends the consumer side and the security side together. And it's, it's something that is very difficult to actually execute on, but I think is really important. I just spent the morning 
playing with Keybase.io, which is a way to kind of make um, encrypting stuff a little easier and a little bit more consumer um, centric. Um, and even it is very complicated. And so how do we, how do we create an opportunity for people to have safe, uh, safety on the internet, privacy on the internet, um, and kind of stand against government surveillance a little bit, but not have to be computer programmers? I think that's an excellent topic, and I think we need to talk more about that. Speaking of moms, uh, you know, I'm super glad that you joined us today. I know that's a lot of exciting. I'm excited to follow along with you and what you're doing. And um, thanks for taking time out and ducking into the hallway and <laughs> trying to find Internet access, which is always crazy at South by Southwest. And I can't wait to meet you in real life. Um, yeah, we'll, 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 t we'll chat soon. What's the best way for somebody to follow your work and what you're doing? I mean, right now, um, just Harper on Twitter is, is probably the best. And then my company is launching something very soon. So that's modest.com. We're very excited. Very exciting. Very exciting stuff. Thanks again for joining us. Thank you. Talk to you soon. Absolutely. So next up, we have another guest joining us. Um, we are a little tight on time, but I want to talk a little bit about the marketing space because this is a really big part of interactive and brands are engaging. We've got uh, uh, John Noseworthy joining us and he is with IBM. Thanks for joining us on the show today. Oh, it's my pleasure to be here. Absolutely. My What's that? Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Okay, good. So you're um, you're at South by Southwest, obviously. You've got a lot happening. Um, tell us a little bit about what you're speaking about at South by. So I'm really talking about um, how media and entertainment companies and marketers especially are using big data and analytics to understand individuals at a, at a, you know, or really understand audiences at an individual level. And then how do they do that without sort of completely freaking out their audience? How do we do that? And walk that fine line between versus cool um and that's um it's a it's a, it's a tricky tricky tightrope to walk so big data is important we hear that term a lot um analytics are very important i'm very analytic i love looking at the numbers and just really kind of measuring things but consumers don't really want to be referred to that way and they want to be uh considered um in you know kind of that relationship process how do the analytics play in and how how big of a conversation is that at south by this year oh i think I think it's a huge conversation and the analytics play in not to just help organizations improve their marketing campaign performance, but to really set up, you know, win-win scenarios. We want to convert insights into relevance. We want to figure out what it is organizations can learn about their audience members and then give something back to them, whether it's the next best offer or a piece of content or an entire experience. And I think that when you combine that level of personalization with privacy where we really start to see success. Lady Gaga is being paid $2 million by Doritos. We see all types of brands. We've mentioned Oreo, I think, on every single interview because they're of the Oreo conversation. But brands are really engaged with marketers at this event. There's a lot of fun around it. Um, but the fact that Lady Gaga is going to be there and Doritos is paying her to be there, and, and this event is very, you know, music meets film, meets interactive, meets brands, meets marketing. I mean, is that what does that say about the event that um, that people are paid to be there? It's I, I don't know. It, is that a good thing? I mean, is it great for marketers? Is it great for Doritos? Sure, sure. Why not? I mean, consider the fact that all of those things that are going on here, film, interactive music, all of those worlds are coming together in ways they never have have before so you know doritos meeting lady gaga uh oreos meeting the world of real-time marketing and i am meeting everyone or you know and and being involved in this entire con it, it i think it's a great thing because it's it's about time all of these worlds come together and if you think about what organizations are trying to do with their data they're trying to bring all of their worlds together to better serve their audiences so I think that this show is doing exactly that, and I'm excited to be a part of it. I really like the thought leadership that happens at South by Southwest, and it does seem to change and evolve every year. I mean, the word that came to mind to me this morning was innovation. And, you know, you no, know, there is not a big necessarily, except, you know, Glimpse launched, obviously. but And there are a lot of other apps and things that do get launched, but that's really not what I think South by Southwest is today. It seems to me it's about the conversations around the marketing, around the software, around the things that are really big topics for us. There's tons of data and people do have a lot of fun, but there's a lot to gather. What is one takeaway that you want to have this year from South by Southwest? 
I think the one takeaway that I want to have is, is, is really helping organizations understand that as in, in consumers, and which is what we all are, you know, there's a lot of talk around no more B2B, no more B2C. It's all human to human. Um, and, and I think in the end, we all just were willing to share who we are and share those insights. But we expect something. And, you know, for marketers or music goers or film lovers who come to this uh, event, we expect something in return. We expect uh, an experience that is personalized and we expect something that adds value. And I think marketers have the opportunity to add a lot of value downstream. And what I want to take away from this event is learning how all these different people that I get to interact with, how are they doing it? I, I know the marketing world, but I don't know the music world. I don't know the film world. And I have an opportunity here to learn that. And I think that's really exciting. Well, I really appreciate you taking time out of the rain and, uh, and all the excitement that's happening around South by Southwest. If somebody wants to connect with you, what they want to find out what you're speaking about, uh, what your work is at, at IBM, how, what's the best way they can do that? We, we've lost, we your, lost audio. your audio. We lost your audio. Wait, wait, wait. Graham Knows, G-R-A-E-M-E-N-O-W-S. Just try, try uh, one, one lost, more time. I, I think I think there's a little bit of bandwidth, but try that one more time. One more time. It. Can you hear me now? <laughs> I don't know. It sounds like a Verizon commercial. Um, you know what? We'll be sure to make everybody aware what your contact information is. And uh, you can find that by um, following me also on Twitter at, at Tanya Hall Radio. And I'll be tweeting out everybody's uh, Twitter handle. If you're not on Twitter... Um, we'll also have this in the show. Thanks again for joining us. And enjoy South by Southwest. <laughs> so if you're listening to this, he just did the big OK sign, which uh, and a lot of uh, streaming video problems, obviously, at a big festival like South by. Huge event. Um, we've actually got a lot of people that we can't get to. We're going to have a hard stop here. But you know what? We are going to give you a follow-up show on Tuesday. So if you've been following, if you want to follow South by Southwest or you have questions, you can reach out to me um, here at Twit. I'm going to be on chat for a while and be letting me know exactly what you want to hear. Thanks for joining us today. And we'll be back on Tuesday for a wrap-up of South by Southwest Interactive.